and filling in with molten material. We also see sedimentary mountains like the Appalachians filled with fossil sea life. Right. Now, that didn't happen from a tidal wave. That happened because this part of the land was under the ocean at one time. And we're at about, uh, we're about 900 feet above, square, above sea level here. So that's a big difference in ocean levels. Even if all the polar caps melted, you wouldn't see a three-foot rise in the water. It wouldn't be nowhere near enough to cover the Earth. So it's clear that we did have cataclysms that continents like Atlantis and Mu Lemuria went underwater and, and went to the bottom of the sea, and the seas receded from the dry land. We have more dry land on the Earth now than we've ever had. So living here in western Pennsylvania, I should go buy a boat? <laughs> well, it depends on how far away you are from the coast. Uh, Pittsburgh. According, well, according to, to uh, anthropological maps that we have now of the Earth, approximately 80% of the population of Earth lives within 20 miles of a coast. So that that's would pretty be, significant. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. huge. If we had a tidal wave of that kind on the east coast of the United States, you could you could guarantee that 20 to 30 miles inland would be nothing but a sandbar. And that means that the people that know how to do stuff are going to be gone. I mean, I know how to drive a car, but I don't know how to dig up the iron and smelt it and hammer it out into sheets of iron and, and make, make a car from scratch. So it won't take long before the stuff that we know how to use becomes old and moldy and disappears, and we go back to rubbing two sticks together to make fire. So you're not, we're not looking at, um, or let's just say, it doesn't look, appear like it will be an extinction level event, but more so of something that will knock us back a couple of generations, I guess you could say. It could, unless the human race, with its unprecedented ability to communicate around the globe, gets the message. And we move and protect ourselves and store up some food and realize that this is not Y2K. This is not fake. This is something that several generations spent a vast majority of their gross national product trying to tell us about. Let me, uh, let me just say this, and this is... This is just strictly observation. There are people out there that are preparing for this, and it's not the masses. The masses are kind of uninformed. They believe what the mainstream media tells you. Yeah, those 2012 guys, you know, they're a bunch of kooks. But if you take a look, they don't normally, governments don't work in haste, number one. Nothing is done quick with the government, whether it be our government or any other government. So for the Norwegian government to build a seed vault in the side of a mountain in the Arctic Circle in a nine-month period, it kind of should, for, for everybody out there, it should put, uh, uh, these alarm bells should be sounding in your head. I you know? so. Yeah, when, when you have deep underground military bases being built in haste and government offices being relocated from the Alexandria and Arlington, Virginia area out to Denver, you should say, why are they doing that? Because... Yeah, Foggy Bottom moving. is 50 feet below sea level. Right. What, what's going on with, with, uh, with all this activity? What are they preparing for? And it appears that we're seeing preparations for a cataclysmic event. And this is happening all over the world. So it is happening. And... Unfortunately, and I, I hate to say it because um, history shows that people over time just, they're numb. And they're going to believe what they're told and they're going to believe what they're felt. But history also shows that the government's only going to tell people uh, when it's absolutely, they can't hide it anymore. There's absolutely no way they can avoid it. And we're at the point where... We're getting to be at the stage where they, they aren't going to be able to hide it. 
we're seeing seismic activity. I don't know, Doc, is the, is the seismic activity increasing in number and in size or just in size? No, it's increasing in intensity and frequency since 1980. And we've had a rise, and it's not because of detection, because we've had these geophones in place since the late 70s. Uh, they, it is because there is more activity in the Earth. Mm -hmm. And and what could what's causing that? Is it the is it the pull from from that uh, the galactic equator? Is that is that what it is that's that's causing this increase in in seismic activity? Uh, that would be uh, what I would say. It would have to be an external force from the Earth that's causing this, and we're also seeing it in the other planets. We're seeing several moons that are having huge geysers of water, and Believe it or not, this water, the geysers are so powerful that the water is leaving the gravitational pull of those moons. And it's going out into space and forming rings around those little moons. Okay, so as the Earth approaches the galactic rift, which will have the most, uh, the most pull on it, is, is the Earth being morphed and misshaped? Is that, that's what's causing these... Uh, these uh, uh, oil wells to go off like they are? Because I'm under the, the impression that uh, the Gulf, this thing that's going off in the Gulf of Mexico is possibly a cover-up to an e even bigger problem as the Earth goes through this rift and it has all these uh, cosmic tidal forces uh, imposed upon it, so therefore they need to come up with an excuse. Well, it could be. I, I have a tendency to, uh, when it comes to stuff like that, to just follow the money. And, and I can tell you that from the activity that I've seen, it looks like that several executives and companies that were invested in that well divested of their stock and doubled their insurance holdings in that well within weeks of this disaster. Right, correct. And, and that, that's, that's just too much of a coincidence for me. Right. And, and but but like John was saying, <clears throat> there has been talk, and uh, uh, one of the one of the uh, people that I've read, uh, what's his name? He's out of uh, Holland, I think it is. Uh, gosh, I can't remember his name. I have it in my uh, in my prep here, and I'll 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 bring it I'll bring it back. But there's talk about there being as as we get closer to transiting this galactic plane. Um, of pressures being internal pressures of the Earth be building up, much like if we notice all the planets in the solar system are heating up, and yeah. when you heat when you heat something up, you know, and we'll just say that the crust is kind of like a lid, you're going to start having things pop, much like those geysers, and we're wondering if this isn't one of those situations. Did they perhaps tap into something that? Uh, because of these new forces being exerted that we really haven't had any exposure to in the past, that it's becoming a problem, that they knew that this was going to be a problem, and they said, uh-oh, you know, maybe these pressures, we didn't expect this when we tapped into this bad boy, so maybe we should uh, get, a, get a hold of our Bubba's over at uh, Goldman Sachs and, and everything else and tell them to dump the stock, you know, so they don't lose their money. Do you think that... that the, the cosmic forces acting on our planet can have that kind of effect on that kind of activity on, say, like oil wells and 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 uh, things of that nature. I'm not. I'm not really sure about that. Uh, I I know a little bit about the oil and gas industry. I spent about a decade in it in, on the exploration side, and and I can tell you that that the procedures that were conducted on Deepwater Horizon. Uh, nine times, I'm sorry, 30 times in the last 15 years have resulted in well explosions. <laughs> uh, when, when, you, when we drill for oil, uh, once we get the, the first casing set, which is usually about 100 feet deep, we start putting mud in the hole. And the mud goes down the center of the drill pipe, and then as the hammer uh, makes chips out of the rock beneath, the mud comes up the outside of the drill pipe in between the drill pipe and the casing and brings the cuttings to the surface. Now that mud does two things. First, it clears the hole because you can't use compressed air 
and very deep wells. And second, it keeps 